Hi guys, I'm James Bespoke and welcome back to another video. And if you didn't guess it from the intro, we're looking at the Echo One GAT today. Now for the one that we're going to include in the video, it's the one without the stock. We do this in two variants. You can also get it with like an M4 style stock on the back as well. Um, as you'll have seen in the box, you get the gun itself. You get two high capacity magazines. You also get a nickel metal hydride 1200 milliamp 8.4 volt battery and a basic wall charger. So very cool looking sub gun here. This is like, uh, I'm not really sure what the, the caliber of the real one is. I presume it's a uh, nine mil or 45 mil, uh, 45 ACP, sorry. Um, but the SF version uses these stick type magazines. As you see here, you get two high caps included in the box. You can get the mid caps available separately as well. They do a plethora of accessories for this thing and they also quite heavily support it with spare parts. You've got a metal top rail section here. You've got a rail, a 20mm rail on the top, 20mm rail on the bottom which holds a foregrip. You've got some very basic pistol style sights on the top there, including two sling attachments which are uh, attached to the receiver, as well as a QD sling swivel point on the back which is a very nice touch. Plastic lower frame and uh, grip that you see here. This is where the battery goes, so what you'll do is you just unscrew this little nut and bolt section here, and then the grip pulls off. This then splits down into two halves where you can install that battery that's included. Just so uh, you know, the battery that I'll be using in the chrono test and the range test today is the accuracy test, sorry, is the gun, the battery that comes with the gun. And I haven't charged it, this is as it is out the box, so in the video bit that you'll see that I've already pre-recorded doing the Corona results and the actual test, I'm using this battery. So you'll see here, not too bad on that little battery at all. Especially that's the way it came out of the box. Uh, but just a reference here, I have a very small uh, 15, 15C, 1000mAh 11.1 battery, again this is not fully charged but just so you've got a, an idea. You're obviously going to get quicker and snappier trigger response, as you'll see there, and then you're going to get an increased rate of fire, which is probably what you're going to be running it on. Nickel metal hydride batteries now, I mean, they're great for beginners when they come free in the box, but to me, in my opinion, this style of battery is dead technology, and I just wouldn't recommend using it anymore. I go to LiPo batteries, 7.4 11.1s, Especially with the gap because that grip is absolutely massive and hideous and I would much rather run it like this. You could still run like a slimmer pistol grip style, um, but a grip there if you wanted to. You could put a red dot sight on there. We've got a red dot sight available. Let's see what we've got. Let's nick the one off the M45. Obviously this is uh, on a riser so it's probably going to be a little bit too high, but just for purpose of the demonstration you could very easily put you know whatever red dot style sight you want on the top there um, there's nothing to mount it on the rear section which is a bit of a bummer because um, I would much rather mount a red dot sight above the action like here so it's a little bit closer to the eye but I would probably recommend running like an RMR style with a 20mm um, adapter plates that they usually come with nice and out the way and you'll get a nice sight picture You've got a groove cut in the top uh, rail section here so you can see the iron sights through that rail section as long as nothing's mounted on there. But for me, I would run like a, a split cell 7.4 or 11.1. You've got plenty of battery space in here to fit a small one in there. Yes, you might have to sort of take this off and pull this out to change the battery. Um, but if you're not using this as a primary and you're perhaps using it as a backup as a sniper platform, uh, which I'll get into in just a moment, that's going to be perfect for you. You won't need any more battery than, than like a thousand or eleven hundred milliamp split cell, and then you could run the wire in the uh, in the receiver section itself here, the barrel section, um, to which you would get the full capabilities of the SMG without running this really ugly massive grip. I understand why they put this in there because they want you to get a battery in there nice and easy. You can obviously pull the charging handle back and lock it into place, which was it reveals the hop up. It is. A little bit flimsy feeling, um, but it does the job. You'll hear the spring rattle. I'm not sure if you can hear that on the camera. 
So what I would probably do as well if I was running this, I would just get some heat shrink and just coat the spring uh, with a bit of heat shrink on there just to stop it rattling up against the receiver. So nice selector uh, on the side, nice and positive. You've got safe, semi and fully automatic as you've seen just there. I think these accept the normal uh, Airsoft AG upgrade parts, gears, motors and such like that, which is not the same that I can say for the gun that is most like this. Um, I actually have a gun like this in my personal collection, but it isn't the Echo One. I've got it here just for demonstration. Um, it is the Red Wolf KG9. Let me just see if it's got 9mm Luger, so these are 9mm in the real world. And it's, it's a lovely gun, it fires really well, but the part support for this thing is just non-existent with Red Wolf, uh, which I'll go into that a little bit later on in the video. But this runs like a standard version two set of gears. Uh, I think it's a short shaft motor. I can't quite remember, it might be a long shaft motor uh, without double checking that. Runs a micro switch and it has a PTW uh, Sistema style uh, cylinder up here. So you don't have to have tappy plates or anything like that. The performance out of this thing running the Sistema parts is absolutely phenomenal. But again, something broke on this and I've been unable to get a part. So I actually had to, actually had to manufacture my own part to fix this thing as well as source micro switches online, which I was buying blindly because I didn't know which one was the right one. So this is the closest counterpart to the Echo One Gap. As you can see, they're very similar. This one has a slightly longer top section, uh, barrel section, whatever you want to call it, and the, the sort of holes uh, in the barrel section there are obviously a little bit different too. Um, you don't get any rails with this one either. You don't get that nice QD sling point on the side. You do get two sling points one front, one back, but they're much more low profile. The KG9 does come with a 14 mil counterclockwise threaded barrel straight out of the box. As far as I'm aware, the Echo One doesn't come with it included. I think it might be an optional extra. I've tried to unscrew this, uh, but I think it, look, it looks like it's molded on there. So I don't know whether you have to buy like a threaded barrel from them. I'm sure one of you out there will know. So, there's loads of applications for this, and speaking from obviously my own personal experience, I bought well, I got the KG9 in a trade. It's a lot more sophisticated in terms of how it works compared to this one, which makes it a little bit more problematic. But the perfect role that I have for this SMG, which would be the same with the Echo One, again, when you put the magazines in, they wobble around and thinking these magazines are really expensive. Um, was a backup to a sniper. So we did a, a weekend event last year, which was Gangster City, which was last September 2019, I think it was. I was running my trusty Striker ASO-1, and the engagements we was getting into, sometimes we was perhaps coming around a corner or approaching a building where, you know, the sniper was completely useless. A pistol might be a little bit outmatched for what they were, because there was a lot of guys running their assault rifles. So we needed something just to get me out of Dodge, get me out of that bad situation where I'm too close to engage with a sniper rifle, the pistol might be a little bit underwhelming compared to going against like assault rifles and such. So I decided to give this a go, I, I built it up for the uh, ready for the event, got it working without Red Wolf's help, um, and got it running, and it was per it had a perfect roll, so I was, apologies there as the uh, camera timed out, but um, yes, yeah, so I was up on top of a hill with a buddy of mine who had sniper rifles, uh, we got flanked by about three or four guys. Um, I had the KG9, I turned around, lit them up with a bit of full auto at about 20, 30 meters, and it got us out of that sticky situation. So the Echo One Gap has a perfect role uh, as a sniper backup as well as a primer as well. We do offer this as uh, a variant with an M4 stock, so if you want a bit more stability when firing it, uh, of course, you can have that and you can able to cheat the stock as you're firing the, uh, the, the gun in your game or skirmish or event, whatever you want to do. So we'll get to the top down camera now and we'll take a quick close look at this thing before we do the chrono and accuracy test. In the chrono test, I was using 0.2 gram BBs. In the accuracy test, I was using 0.3 gram BBs with the standard battery that came in the box. I haven't charged it, haven't touched it at all. Um, and I was firing it at a fixed a standing position from 15 meters. Um, just using the foregrip like that and just holding it out in front of me, trying to keep it steady. Um, so we'll get to that now and we'll be back on camera in just a moment. So here we have the Echo One GAT. Very cool looking sub gun here. 
most interest, interesting about this is it's not just fully automatic like the Red Wolf KG9 uh, and other SMGs of this kind of type. You've actually got a selector on the side so you can shoot semi-automatic, fully automatic and then of course you've got a manual safety there as well. What's great about this uh, SMG is you don't get one but you get two high cap magazines included in the box. As you'll see here. A windy wheel on the bottom, they've got a little, a very narrow channel on the back here for filling the BBs in. You can get mid cap magazines as well. And jamming rod included in the box, you've got a nickel metal hydride type 1200 milliamp 8.4 battery, which comes free with it as well, as a simple wall charger. I would highly recommend. Even though you get these batteries free with the guns like this, I'd always recommend going to LiPo because it will just make your life easier. Very nice quality, metal barrel and, and top receiver section here with a polymer plastic type, uh, style frame. Magazines, they look like they're uh, steel, but uh, yet to be determined, they are metal. You got the grip section here, which is where you would Predominantly put your battery, just removing that nut there, and the screw will fall out. And then you can split the grip section here for ease of use. Putting your small nickel metal hydride battery in there, you can put a very large LiPo battery in there as well. So you could very easily, if you didn't want to run this grip. Um, which I understand why you wouldn't want to run it because it is uh, big and ugly um, and you've got like nice rail sections here you could very much fit a 7.4 11.1 um, sort of uh, twin triple stick lipo in here it'd have to be a small one but you could then run this internally and you wouldn't have to depend on running the grip you could also run a small uh, peck box as well if you wanted to You've got the usual KG9 style um, sing points here, but what I like with the, with this uh, SMG is they've included a quick detach sling swivel on the back section here, which is predominantly where you're going to be carrying this thing from. It's very comfy. It's not heavy at all, although it does have a have a, a heft to it, so it's not like it feels cheap or plasticky or anything like that. It's got a good weight to it, but it's not heavy in terms of you carrying this round long periods of time just look how cool that looks imagine getting the battery up in the front section here and then you're not going to have to worry about uh, running the ugly grip we also do this um, GAT with a M4 style stock on the back as well so if you want to run M4 style stock you can do it is available in that configuration as you can see here I can lock the fake bolt up into the uh, rear here and you can release it forward it's not the uh, most pleasing of noises at all, but you know, still gets it out the way. If you were just in your hop up, which is done just through this window here, which you can slide front and back. See a bit of spring twang in there, but a heat shrink could sort that out. Trigger feels good as well. Semi auto and then safe locks the trigger, of course. The magazines are easy to get out with the mag release just here. So yeah, very nice external quality here for the price. Uh, I don't believe this is threaded. I think it's molded. I think they sell a threaded barrel separately. Uh, if this is threaded, it does look like it should be, uh, but it could be a mold. Um, I have struggled to, I don't want to damage this thing, of course. I, I can't get this off in either direction. But uh, even if they don't do a threaded barrel, that'd be very easy just to, to modify yourself for suppressors and traces and stuff like that. For reference here, I have the very much more expensive RWA KG9, and as you can see, it's very similar in the way that it looks, uh, and, the, and the bottom section here is very similar. Uh, the top receiver here is very similar with the, the sling points are much more low profile, it's much longer. You get a 14mm threaded barrel with the Red Wolf. Um, the only reason I'm comparing this is because I have one, this is my personal. KG9, this has been an absolute pain in the ass. Um, 
the support that Red Wolf give with this product is non-existent. I've been trying to get a hop unit uh, and other bits and pieces, micro switches and stuff for this gun ever since I got it. And they have been nothing but um, an annoyance trying to deal with them. They ignore emails. They say they're going to look into it for you. They say they're going to get back to you, then they never do. And then I just eventually, after about five or six months of trying through all the channels, they turn around and basically just said no. So I had to end up turning uh, my own components to fix the hop-up unit. But the performance out of this thing is very good. Of course, this runs like an AEG style lower half, and then you've got a Systema style PTW cylinder uh, with a with a a proprietary hop uh, and, bar and system style barrel there. So in comparison, the GAT is much more affordable. It's much easier if something were to break because you know it uses a lot of AG spec parts. Um, the magazines are readily available. The parts are readily available if you go on the Echo One website, the, the amount of parts and stuff they do for this thing if it breaks. So if you're gonna get something like this, I would much go over to the Echo One than the Red Wolf one, because the Red Wolf support is absolutely non-existent. So let's go crane this thing, let's give it an action test, and let's see what it can do. So from semi-auto at standing position, most of the shots fell within this circle, any other variants with either myself. Um, you know, two thumb widths, the size of these circle rings here on the target. So you can see that's a good accuracy at 50 meters, especially from something that's pistol sized and then just whacked it with full auto. So you see there about 345, 346 FPS, there was a, a low reading where I clipped the inside of the chrono. But it's literally, you know, about three to five FPS variants, which a cheap gun is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Accuracy out this thing as well at 15 meters, you know, you're hitting a target like that on semi-auto and full auto is absolute joy. Uh, it's even more fun if you were to go to a higher powered battery like 7.4 LiPo or 11.1 and just give you that higher burst of fire like an SMG should have. Um, absolutely superb. The hop-up's nice and easy to find behind the ejection port there. What would I do if I was buying this gun? Um, you don't really have to do anything at all. It's just personal preference. I would like to run a LiPo inside there, but it's not going to be the easiest thing to do. You could run it in a pet box as well if you wanted to. PTS do their own style battery foregrip, which um, I would rather use. If I was going to use a foregrip, I'd use probably use the PTS one over this one. Uh, just gets a little bit low, uh, more low profile. Well suited for LiPo batteries though. Um, and I would just probably put some heat shrink around that spring just because it rattles around a bit. It rattles around a bit when firing as well. But I've had great fun with this thing. Uh, I've had it for a while. I just, just ran, got around to doing the video for you guys. Um, I've been excited to do the video because I have the KG, KG9 and I want to know how this was because that's probably more of a, I hate to say it, it's probably more of a war hanger now. It isn't, but parts, compatibility and, and support from Red Wolf is, like I say, non-existent. Don't even waste your time. Um, judging by the fact that they make, they manufacture the guns, it's just an absolute, absolute joke. Um, but Echo One, if you go on their website, you can actually view all the spares and stuff. They do pretty much everything you can think of, as well as accessories. You know, get a, a 14 mil uh, threaded barrel on there, get a nice suppressor or a tracer unit on. You're going to have absolute mounds of fun with this thing. Great for veteran players who are looking for something a little bit cheeky. Great for veteran players who are running sniper platforms maybe and they want a bit of a more versatile backup to get you out of the thick of it. Um, and great for new players, you know, it's it's got the right amount of weight to it. It's not heavy because it's not massive, but that doesn't mean it's cheap at all. Um, it's got the correct weight that I believe it should have. It doesn't feel cheap or tacky. Um, but for the younger guys out there, the short guys or the, 
the younger players. Um, you know, kids, if you want to take your kids along to an airsoft game and they want something funky and cheeky like this, um, it's going to fulfil the, the role perfectly. It's an absolute blast to fire. You can get it with the M4 stock on as well if you want a little bit more. I'm not sure if the M4 stock on comes with the rail here, uh, but you'll see that on the website anyway. But for this and many other great products, go to our website, bespokeairsoft.co.uk. We are still shipping and haven't stopped shipping over this COVID-19 crisis, so it's business as usual for us. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for supporting Bespoke. We've just had two of the best months we've ever had since opening the new website. So thank you very much for that. And we'll see you in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed the GAT. Uh, something a little bit different for you guys. We've got more things coming up. I've got the Umex Legends, uh, Lever Action. I've got more pistols. I've got a cheeky grenade launcher, which is uh, actually pretty cool because it does something a little bit different to everybody else. But we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.